Board on March 10th, 2020. And we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on the agenda is a public hearing concerning the marijuana moratorium. And is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Public hearing is open. Uh, public comment. Katie? Um. What steps are there going to, does it have to be, uh, what steps are necessary to put the uh, ordinance to eliminate the DD section on the ballot before it goes to ballot? What steps are necessary for us to do that? Well, we, we need the ordinance, actual, an actual ordinance. And we have a committee that's working on that. Okay. It needs to be reviewed by the select board. We need to hold a public hearing, and then we need to have a vote. Will this be done before the, um, to make this finalized, the moratorium? I don't know the answer to that. That's really the, the work of the committee, and maybe Max is there, too. So maybe you could give us some guidance on that. So just a quick thing. The reason can't just do it quickly is because it's in our zoning ordinance. And for that to happen, we need the planning board to hold a public hearing, and then in our specific moratorium, I say that we need a town-wide vote. So I don't want to wait until a special town meeting. I want to wait until June or likely a November election so that everyone in town can vote on it. And as Bob said, what I want to do is I want to see what the marijuana committee does first for recommendations for medical marijuana, because they may recommend to have it in the ordinance or change it since. Will the moratorium be safe until you do that? If you. If we if we vote for this. Uh, if you approve it tonight, then the moratorium will have a 180 day extension, which is the maximum we can ask for. And then we can do it again one more time, because as I say again, this will likely have to go to the November vote instead. All right. Okay. So we'll be looking at one more extension between now and November, sometime in August. August, September. Um, the committee considered uh, the uh, Section DD and by unanimous vote, I think it was 4 0, decided that it would support both continuation of the moratorium, but more importantly, that it would, it would support extinguishing Section DD from our land use ordinance. And just the background of that were, two, were several things. First, in the previous, in the first meeting when the moratorium was discussed, it was overwhelmingly supported. There were only two people that didn't vote for the moratorium originally. And of course, I think everybody understands, once it's voted on the select, by the town, the select board can extend it six months at a time as long as it's, it's still working on the process, which it is. Some of the thoughts in the discussion that we had were that given that we had three granddaughter, grandfathered uh, oh, retail stores, and that we have unlimited number of registered medical care caregivers, marijuana caregivers, that it wasn't felt that anybody who wanted to have medical care of marijuana in our town had easy access. So therefore, it wasn't felt that from a supply standpoint, there was any need to have a massive dispensary uh, which would probably serve out of towners much more than people actually in the town of Walterboro. So when we considered all those factors, plus the overwhelming sentiment of the people at the original meeting, that was why we had the 4 zero vote, including one person who is a medical marijuana provider. She was one of those four votes. And so we are obviously on here today to say that yes, we would like to have this moratorium continued, and of course we would like to have at some point a vote by the town on extinguishing Section DD. And the last point is, this is sort of a legal ambiguity. That was done when the town didn't have the ability uh, for home rule. In effect, it was almost opted in and sort of protected itself. It did this limited zoning for, I believe it was uh, 1A and, one, and 1B on Route 1, just 1A, just to protect itself. But obviously, the town 
now with the new law say you have to opt in. And so this simply extinguishes a sort of ambiguity in the law so that it's clear what the intent is of the people in the town that they want. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on this? Okay. Um, I think we're ready to close the public hearing. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Public hearing is closed. And the next step would be to act on the marijuana moratorium. Make a motion to act on the mar marijuana moratorium. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Anybody? All in favor? 5 0. It's okay. extended. Thanks very much, Thanks, Max. Max. Next item is a presentation from the water. We have a great discussion. And we're looking forward. I, I see you folks have put some effort into this so that we can see where we are and where you think we should be. This is Mark Benoit of Maine Water, formerly Public Utilities Commission, and uh, Michael Thomas yes. of Maine Water as well. I, I believe you're both based in Saco, is that right? That's right. I'm a Waldeboro resident. Yes. The father of many. Yes, I know. Yeah. So, thank you for giving us this opportunity to uh, walk through what the current financial picture of the uh, water department is and uh, our recommendations on our path forward. So, currently, um, water rates were last set in 2005. And in the intervening years, we lost a significant customer with Sylvania closing. We've also seen some uh, level of conservation, um, water conservation use, so we've seen usage drop. And that combination, if you go back to the 2005 rate case, has reduced our revenues, incoming revenues, by about $40,000. Is that per year, Mark? Mark? Yes, yeah. per year. If um, you then look at the capital expenditures that have been done. The major work done on the system was, I believe, in 2005, uh, just prior to that, with the new storage tank and a number of the mains that went in. In uh, 2017, so there were loans associated with that, and the town has been, or the water department has been paying on those loans. In uh, 2017, there was some additional uh, capital projects with respect to uh, water main replacements. So we had an increase of about 33000 in uh, loan payments since that last rate case. And if you look at the operating expenses, the operating expenses have really remained flat. So we're in a place where <clears throat> at year end of 2015 we had about $100,000 on hand um, and as we move forward, looking at the end of 2020, that balance uh, will be about $10,000. So there's been uh, steady erosion of the capital balance. So looking forward then, um, we see a shortfall of about 165000 over the next five years. And that is really based on a minimum of capital spending. So that's when you... When you look at the books, that's taking your depreciation and, and not reinvesting that depreciation into replacement of old pipes and, and those kind of things, which would be the normal practice. So when you break down that cash shortfall, I just talked about the income side. Again, that income side, because of the reduced usage, is down about $40,000 from the last rate case. A preliminary master plan was done in 2017-2018, uh, um, and that forecast a number of improvements. Those improvements um, that should be made are about $100,000 over the next five years. Um, so we don't have cash on hand to do those things, but there are loan programs available. 
if that would become necessary through the uh, drinking water program, the state re revolving loan fund for drinking water systems. And then one kind of last unknown with this particular system has to do with the ion exchange system at, at the uh, water source. So as many of you know, there, there were levels of uranium in those wells, and there's a treatment system that reduces those uh, to meet the drinking water standards. That system has been in place since, I think, 2005 time frame. Um, it's worked well, uh, but at some point, that media, that ion exchange media in there is going to have to be replaced. And it's not so much the cost of the replacement of the media, it's that you now have a, when you take the old media out, you've got a, you've got a media that has some contamination on it that you need to dispose of. So the cost of disposal of that uh, could prove to be expensive. So when we look going forward, um, in order to recover that loss that we've seen in the base revenue, we're recommending that you increase the revenues of the water department from 229000 to 288000 So that's a, about a, it's a 25.8% increase. And we're recommending that you phase that in over three years. Kind of, you have three separate revenue buckets, you might call them. One is the metered customers. So those are both commercial and residential. The second bucket you have is public fire service. And the third is private fire service. Now there are restrictions in the Public Utility Commission rules with respect to public fire service. And one of those restrictions is that they can't pay more than 30% of your total revenue. So what happens when we look at this, if we do 25.8% over three years, year one would be 11.4% of that 25.8. But your public fire protection is already at 80,000. And to meet that 30% rule, um, we need to cap it at the 86,000 that's reflected in this presentation. So that means that the, the increase in year one would fall 14.8% on the metered customers between commercial and residential, rather than the 11.8, because we have to raise those higher than what we raised the fire to stay under the 30% cap that the Public Utilities Commission puts on. And then in year two, we again would recommend an 11% increase on, uh, on the residential commercial side, so there's metered customers. And you see the average bill changes there for year one, it's roughly $10 a quarter. In year two of this, it would be about $9 a quarter. And then an additional increase in the third year of 10%, which would be another $9 a quarter. So you can see the bill impacts of, of what this would be. And then if you move to look at what rates are um, in the area as just kind of a, a, a check against where we're at here. Uh, if you look at uh, Great Salt Bay, you can see their 100 gallon per day, kind of an average use is $104. Main water operating the Camden-Rockland area is at 96, and the proposal for Waldeboro would be at 96. If you're using a little bit more, you can see those numbers as well. I won't read them for you. But you see the proposals in, in the ballpark of what, um, what water is in this part of the country. So with respect to how we would go forward with this, there's, there's a lot of um, timing in the Public Utilities Commission process with respect to how, from the time that you file to, to when you need to hold a public hearing, um, what kind of notices have to go out. And uh, so if we had approval to move forward with an April 1st filing, kind of aligned laid out a timeline based on all those little requirements that are in the rules with respect to how you would get to a uh, effective rate increase on in the beginning of July. 
So if we change that timing, all is I'd have to rejigger that with respect to how many how many days between each notice and and so forth. But you get the sense of what that looks like. So that's what I prepared, and I'd be happy to go through and take comments, questions with respect to that. Captain, I got a question. Sure. So you want to go up 25.8 percent over the next three years, correct? That's correct. Uh, first year you want 14.8. 11 the second year and 10 the third year, correct? Yes. Well, that's 35.8. So, yeah, so so that, that goes to the discussion between the public fire and mm -hmm. the residential, the meter. Mm -hmm. So I can't put the 25.8 25 uniformly across all yeah, I, I get that, but I mean, I'm just... So we're taking a portion of If somebody of that it owns a house in town that's yep. paying this, they're not going to see that. They're going to see a 14.8 percent increase, a 11 percent increase, and a 10 percent increase. They're going to see a 35. Right. That's correct. But that's not what you're saying here. Well, so so people that in so town, we got to fix that so that people understand that in town because they're going to freak out. So. <laughs> I, I know. So I know it's difficult. So you understand the overall revenue yep. increase is 25.8. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. And so in the public notice, we mm -hmm. can explain that directly to a residential customer mm -hmm. that their overall increase over three years is 35.8. Mm -hmm. um, we can just yep. say that straightforward. Yep. 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 I would because. Yeah, they'll, they'll freak yeah, out. I wasn't trying to hide that. <laughs> no, 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 just numbers but, weren't but adding you're up. You're here to yeah. explain it to us, but Abden's completely right. When somebody gets a bill, it's. it's it's yeah, so our first cut at it was to apply it the 25.8 evenly mm -hmm. across those three brackets. Yep. And then I realized 30% caps the fire, so right. we got to right. do more on the residential side than yep. what we had anticipated. Yep. Could you explain what you mean by private fire department? Yes, so private fire protection. So there are some buildings in town that have fire fire protection so they have a Sprinkler service systems. line coming to their building that provides the tap water <coughs> okay, regular the uses and, and then they have kind of a larger line that goes for fire protection okay. so places like the town office mm -hmm. Hannaford um, and I think the former tax mm -hmm. and so forth okay. I also think in your uh, little thing that you're going to put out to the, the, the rate payers is that there has not been a rate increase for well, it'll be 15 years now by the time we started this. It'll be 15 years. So that, that, that would make a big help as far as people understanding. And we can certainly make a draft of what that notice looks like and bring it to the committee mm -hmm. and bring it to the town manager. Would be I think that would be that a great approach. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I don't want people to confuse what you've made very clear in your point, and that is that overall, in the revenue side, it's a 25.8% increase. That's the increase in revenue that we need to have. Right. And in order to get there, there are those different buckets that do affect people differently in terms of the percentages. But the target number here is that revenue increase, <coughs> because you need to put money aside to make future improvements. You can't do that without that increase. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it was you, Abdin, and Julie who went down there, was it two years ago? That yeah, it's was been about two years now. And yeah. part of that's on us. Oh, no question. <laughs> but part of that's on the town. I mean, we should have we should have been talking about increases over the last 12, 15 years, and we didn't. And we should have been. So, and part of that's on you. Oh, it I certainly would have been good if you'd come to us and pointed out that maybe it's time to start talking about. And it. I think one of the things, separate agenda item, but one of the things is going forward having quarterly meetings with your with the committee, with the town committee. And we look forward to doing that because it helps us understand what's going on in the community, how best to serve, and so forth. We've had a great, and I just want to just say this, we've had a wonderful working relationship with Maine Water. At least my experience has been wonderful with Maine Water. I, I mean, they welcomed Abdin and I down there, and, and they, they owned it too, you know. Um, so, I mean, I think it's been a great relationship, but definitely more communication would have been good not in just in the last three years, but probably over the last 15. Yeah. So, but you know what? It's a new dawn, it's a new day. Life is good. Oh. Here in Baltimore. We will do that going forward. Sounds great. Any other questions or comments of Mark and Michael? All right.
I, I think we can consider this part of the presentation. Thank you very much. Give this. Since we're in this part of it, we might as well go ahead and set a date for the public should. hearing. Well, and does that look like by 12? My, my May 12, 2020 is the suggested date. Is there a, is there a motion to set, uh, set that date as a public hearing for the main water will rate increase? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion on that one? All in favor? Okay, good. We've, we've got the, the hearing. hearing date set. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last matter concerns the main water contract that the water department committee discussed in great detail with main water. And we had a meeting, was it last Friday? It was last Friday that we met. And uh, we believe finalized the, the document for the select board consideration. And I think all of you have seen that contract set out to everybody. Are there any, I, let me just point out, the contract does a couple of things. Mark has already alluded to one of the important things it does, and that is it sets up a water department advisory committee, and they would meet quarterly with main water. There would be no select board members on that committee. That would be an independent committee of people who are really knowledgeable about this, <laughs> And thank goodness we have some people on the committee now. I pointed to Michael Thayer sitting at the back there. Delia Moley was in on this from the very start years ago. Uh, Arvin Rowan is au fair with what we've been discussing. So we have a good group, a good core group uh, that we can work with to make this work going forward. Um, so well, that's one of the things the contract calls for. Uh, the second thing that calls for, and this is really goes back to the, the germ of Abden's concern initially, it costs a lot of money to hook up for people who, are, who want to get on the system. Um, it, it, and if you want to put in a fire suppression system, it's even more, <laughs> more expensive. Um, on the other side of that, Maine Water has justifiable concerns about safety. That is priority number one for them. They can't afford to have people go out there and dig and not know what they're doing. So we've included in the new contract a clause 4.5 that requires Maine Water to come up with three contractors. We hope some of them can be local. It would be great if they can be. They've agreed, if there are local contractors who are interested, to help bring them along, to help pre-qualify them for this kind of work. Um, they would get three bids, and the person having the installation done would select which bid or reject all of them. They have that option under the new contract. And if they reject all of them, back to square one and considering what the next steps are. But it gives us as a community more flexibility, hopefully to put a handle on the cost of new service or remedial service. And those are the two major, major <coughs> deals in that contract. Uh, Michael was able to throw in some standard language about what standards apply, uh, and that was helpful. Gave us a better frame of reference. Um, we dealt with the payables issue. Uh, there will be no late payment penalty because you folks control the money. <laughs> um, and I think that pretty much sums up the changes that we've agreed upon uh, to the arrangement we've had all these years with Maine Water. Um, are there any comments or questions at the board concerning this contract? So this is what? Nine, ten year agreement? It's an initial agreement of two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Correct me. Is it one year or two? Well. The, the contract itself. You said will remain in effect to 2029? Right, but there's, a, right? there's a review. There's an annual or biannual okay. review of the rates. I almost think it's every two years, wasn't I it? I think it's every two years. Yeah. Okay. We look at the rates and stuff like that. Right. Yep. Because it wasn't being looked at before. Exactly. But it, it, it is 2029. It gives okay. everybody plenty of time to organize and implement a capital program. <coughs> it needs to be done in some cases. Uh, and it gives us a chance to go back and look at the rates, which we should have been doing all along and we'll be doing now going forward. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other comments or questions on that contract? Okay, I, I think we're 
ready to vote. All in favor of uh, adopting the main contract, main water contract as discussed with the, and agreed upon with the um, water department committee. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you both. For Thank you, Bob. And, and, and just so everybody knows, Rick Milton and Greg Layton are still very, very involved in the, in the process. We're, we're happy to have Mark here as the Director of Administrative Services. He, he helps us run the business. Uh, I, I am in a new role in, in Director of Operations for Maine Water. We do have a new superintendent who serves this community alongside the, the Camden Rockland Division. His, his name is Mike Ames, so he looks forward to getting to know the Select Board and the Water Committee as well. So thanks a lot for having us here tonight. And we're so lucky to have you both involved, and thank you, Mark, for sure. getting involved. Being here. Thanks. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments this evening? I don't see anybody concerned about the agenda tonight. So good. Um, <laughs> citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Select board comments. Yes, ma'am. I was pleased, very pleased to see the outcome of Tuesday's election. All the people that came out to vote. Do we have a number as to how many people came out to vote? I have to have asked Judy that. Well, a lot of people came. I'll find out. I'll find out. But I was very pleased. It was a lot of people, and it was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. It was. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> you get your papers all filled now? I did. Yeah. 439 wow. signatures. Good. Okay. Uh, just Welcome back. Ha Good yeah, thank you. you. <laughs> Happy birthday to Katie. Oh, that's right. Happy birthday, She still Katie. has birthdays? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Going backwards. Going backwards. 29. I believe that. Oh, I don't know what place she's renting to have her function and all that. But no, not. Not. Anyway. I'm all set. Are you all set? Yep. I guess Susan will take down whatever we say. I have so no comments. <laughs> yeah. Jan? Uh, well, a couple things. Um, Mendomic Valley High School's one act plays were last weekend and they were hosted at the Camden Hills Regional High School. And I am pleased and proud to say that Mendomic Valley came in second out of all of the schools that participated Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. So there were a number of them. I'm not sure exactly how many, like four, five, six, seven, eight, like nine, nine or ten schools. And we came in and I, I watched it. It was executed extremely well. Uh, there's going to be an all-district um, fine arts night Thursday, the, what's Thursday, 13th or 12th? I think 12th. So. 12th. 12th. Um, at Madomic Valley High School where there will be art from K through 12, all schools in Waldboro. The play, the one-act play will be put on again at 7.30, um, or is it 7.00? Um, and it's also the uh, empty bowl supper, so you could have, you could go out there at, I think it's five, and have dinner, and then you could see all kinds of art, then you could go to a play all in one spot. So it's like one-stop shopping for all kinds of things to support all, all the children in, um, in SAD 40, all of them, so, so that's really nice. Um, and then I got uh, a chance to go to one of the Monday morning meetings, and that was interesting. And some of the things we discussed were kind of interesting. We discussed some of the policies and working on policies. Um, we discussed Dolly Parton, and that's always fun to have a smile. Actually, it's Dolly Parton's reading. Um, Imagination Library. Right, program that she has, and that actually is from the library. <laughs> Bob's got a shirt. He should wear that for you Dolly that Parton is, shirt? That is true. Well, you know, Bob, Dolly, and I are all the same age. You know, we have that in common. 
Um, about me being old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Good point>. maybe. <laughs> Just yeah, kidding, folks. They definitely Just don't kidding. have a <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, we talked about um, spectrum and how we're getting to getting that taken care of, um, and that's that's a very good thing. We've been working on that for a while. The community navigator was a a nice conversation. I hope we'll be having more of those kinds of conversations um, as time goes on, talking about the roles and funding and all of that sort of thing. So it's, it's good to uh, pick up on all of that stuff. Uh, we talked about food sovereignty in our town, and that's a, and that's a really important issue that we need to. I don't have that problem, but um, maybe I should. Um, but it, it's a real issue for others. We're gonna um, we have some policies coming up that we've been working on, and I I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. I I think we got that this total select board they're the ones who okay the policy. They're written by, oh, different people. And, and we review and um, adopt the policies. And that, so ch any changes or following through on those is also up to the entire board policy. And we're working on updating all of our policies. So we have a couple coming up soon. Um, speaking of that, should that water committee be on the committees? Yes. So is that the new committee? The new yes. committee that all in here? The advisory yeah. It'll be an advisory <coughs> committee. Yeah. So, well, you guys have to change its scope. We do. So. Okay. okay. So that's going to be not yet, but it should be. As but it, it should. It. If we're going to be redoing it, it should be. It should once you create it. Yeah. And okay. Task it. So we probably ought to not okay this until we've done that. Correct. And that way, it'll save save mm -hmm. some time and get them on on the board. Okay. Okay, I guess that's that's about all I can think of. Okay. Just an addendum. Billy, isn't there something coming up Saturday night? It, well, oh, Saturday yeah. and Saturday night. Why yeah. don't you tell us about it? Well, I think Bob Buffalo is going to do that, and I oh. didn't want to steal his thunder. I'm Actually, sorry. I don't want to steal Bill's thunder. But uh, 1.30 at the Public Library is the speaker's program. This all goes with the main 200. Bertha's Gift to Maine, and that's about Bertha Smouse, who was Colonel Isaac Reed's stepdaughter, lived in Reed Mansion, and she helped design the state seal, even though the gentleman from Hollowell got his all the credit. Uh, so that will be Jean, Jean Lawrence will be speaking, no charge, open to the public at 1.30. Then at 5 o'clock is the community Saturday night baked bean and casserole supper. $8 a person, $5, 12 and under, and that's going to, all the proceeds will benefit the BFW and the Walpole Historical And it's going to be at the BFW. And it'll be at the BFW. Okay, thanks. So you're welcome. I hope everybody goes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. I think that I'm on my list of uh, things I need to do tonight. Appreciate it. Um, the second thing on my list, and I've discussed this with, with just about everybody in this room, we need committee members and volunteers. And we're hoping that folks who are on committees now will re-up if their term is ended. Um, and in particular, my hope is that Bill Maxwell will re-up. In, in fact, I even promised Bill that I would beg him on my knees if he would please re up to serve on that committee. So, Bill? Oh! I like to do the picture. I am begging you to please re up on the budget committee for the next fiscal year. I'll have my legal team of Daigle and Associates. <laughs> Daigle, Daigle, and Associates? Dangle, so, finagle, uh, and associates. I will, I, will say, I will say, Bob, you're a man of your word. There you go. Because you said Monday you'd get on your knees and beg. I said, prove it. And he was able to get back up again, too. I and was I was impressed with that. I was impressed with that. Good. That's not easy. Nothing, you know. 
I won't get on my knees, but I I want to I want to uh, get with uh, Honey Bear too, to re up on your. Honey Bear is not up this. Well, Honey no, Bear too is, is not is. up this year. When it is to re up. But John is. Heller, I think, is up this year. Uh, Sandy O'Farro, mm -hmm. I think, is up this year. Uh, as far as the budget committee is concerned, and I hope they continue. They, and we love our budget committee. That's a great mm -hmm. committee. We do. They do hard work. They are awesome. Yep. Diverse and awesome. Bob, do we know the uh, on the committees which committees need <coughs> members? I can tell you right off the top of my head. All okay. of them. <laughs> all of them. But Shelfish we need to know how many because yeah. some are, are limited yeah. to a certain number. Yeah. Shellfish needs two. Um, planning board needs one. Uh, one. Generally, you can show on a people's um, You need a lot, do you? EDC but needs. It's full, but we need to have the people. We EDC. Have. We need to take papers out. Okay. Economic development. Economic, uh, that's economic development. Yes. Yeah. Um, we've got two new members. They so have yeah. two new members, but it, it would be really great, especially, and I'm going to put this well, out there. It would be really uh, great to get some people from a different age demographic. Mm -hmm. I'm saying from the 20 to 45 year old age demographic, and it would be great to have some women get involved on these committees. Yep. Just a different perspective. I'm not saying anything against anybody, but I think the more diverse our committees are, uh, you're going to get different thoughts and processes. And I'm just going to use this as an example. Max. Hi, Max. <laughs> I can't go through a meeting and not evoke the Max. Maximilian. Max. Maximilian. Worth $116,000. Um, and growing. <laughs> and growing. Um, but on the EDC, Max has such a unique perspective mm -hmm. because of his age bracket um, that he really does bring a lot of unique ideas and things like that that, I'm sorry, somebody like me doesn't think or of, me. you know, mm -hmm. just in the way yeah. we communicate and things and, yeah. and how mm -hmm. things are done. So it's, it's really great. So. And I think conservation needs either one or two. Yes, conservation. Yeah. Do you yeah. know how many? The advisory committee for the water department also needs at Correct. least two. Too. Because Abdon and I won't be participating. And we will be putting out um, our call for volunteers and Facebook website. Mm -hmm. And once in the Lincoln County News. Yep. Okay, and these are like Sylvania, that's an ad hoc, right? Right, but that's yeah. full. And that's full. Yeah. And uh, communication, is that ad hoc? Communications and technology. Well, Communications and technology committee does need yes. um, at least four more. Four? It would be great. Because yeah. oh, because it said the membership is five. The membership. Are we down to well, one? We're basically down to one, including and two, including me, and I shouldn't be on it. Yeah. So. Okay. So what we about need... Richard Hobson? Um, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. And Sylvania's full. Budget week. We think it's full. <laughs> Budget would be great if we just stayed. Yes, okay, there, that's good. Yeah. Conservation one or two, shellfish two. Illegal, but to my council. <laughs> and you're all set on the transfer station committee. We are, right? Yes. Yeah, that's really founded by the transit management board. Anyway. Yeah. They, they put that together. Board of Appeals, we've always had issues, I think, getting enough people on that, haven't we? Do we have one opening, Max? I think we have two openings, actually. Two openings. We, yes. We, I think we have two openings. Whenever the last meeting I had, I needed all three members to show up. So we can say two. What about the um, ordinance review committee, Max? That's made up of. That's, that's something you will point. No, right. I'm just wondering about whether you need. Um, it, I'm certainly not going to turn anyone away if someone wants to apply. Okay. Is it is it working well with the numbers you have? Mm -hmm. uh, too many, too few. I'd say too few. A lot of members haven't been showing up for the last few meetings. Ooh. But I think that might have been winter related. So hoping to start things up soon in the spring. Bring food. I'll bring food. food. <laughs> Candy. Well, and maybe we can advertise these on our new website when that's mm -hmm. up. Would be a good. Now that Chang is back, that should happen quicker. <coughs> yeah. She was away. Yeah. That's 
why Billy's looking sad. He's oh, I know. I love it. I know. I love those pictures. So, I think all the sleeping dogs lie on the other sheet. Yeah, I saw the sleeping dogs. That's my. Those are my comments. Well, my comment is we have a budget. Um, and a big thank you goes out. They were all here, and then they all left. But the budget committee met at 5.30, um, and we finalized the budget. And life is grand here in Waldoboro. And we came in $45,889 hairs under LD1. And we are $86,793 under where we were last year. So that is a conservative revenue budget. Um, we have, I was explaining to the Budget Committee earlier, I was asked today, how do I feel about this budget given the current state of affairs in the world? I feel really good about this budget and the current state of affairs in the world. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. Peg and I are extremely, extremely conservative with our revenue numbers. Um, we're using less um, fund balance than we did last year. Um, and we don't over anticipate our revenue and one of the things we have not done at least for the last two years is we have not um, anticipated any revenue from um, interest which is probably a good thing right now <laughs> um, exactly with the rates um, and also our revenue sharing um, we are very conservative on the number we put in our revenue sharing even though we could we could estimate a lot more given what's going on in the world. I'm not sure that the main office of finance or whatever they are called um, that put out the um, revenue sharing numbers, uh, we underestimated that by quite a bit. Um, we'll have a better idea when we go to set the mill rate and that will go right to direct tax relief. So this gives you guys a little something to work with. Um, but we did not put that full number that everybody else has put in. So we're good. Um, I have a summary sheet here. Alex, you can actually take that. Thank you. Have at it. I appreciate it. Um, but I'm very proud of it. I thought everybody did a great job. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you to my department heads that were all good. We really pressed them this year to get this done. I thought some people were going to have a heart attack, John Deggle, <coughs> um, yeah. Yeah. when I told him, hey, I need, I need your budget done. But actually, I think it was one of his easiest budgets ever. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I just have to say publicly a big thank you to Peg Tyne and our finance director. Um, you're incredible. You do a great job. Um, and this was a, it was a pleasure to put together. That's it. Thank you very much. Senate calendar. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Second. There's a couple things on the consent calendar that um, we might want to talk about a little bit. Oh, you want me to highlight them? Sure. Um, so I'm kind of excited about these things, aside from all the minutes. And I have to apologize, there was some date confusion because Julie was doing minutes, and Julie hasn't done minutes in a while. Um, we got a letter from First National Wealth Management just letting us know that because of the spread of the coronavirus and the financial situation, um, don't be have anxiety over our investments. So we're not going to have anxiety over our investments. Nope. Stay the course. We're going to stay the course. Yep. Um, also, we got a letter from the uh, State of Maine Department of Economic and Community Development. And I get to brag on Max again. Yeah. Of course. Um, he helped Odd Alewives put in a grant um, CDBG. for CBDG. Um, and they have accepted the application. And that's just what that means. But um, I just want to thank Max and point out all the hard work he does. And it helps even businesses in town. Can I just add something to that, Julie? Sure. I, I read that letter as meaning that we're eligible to apply. Eligible to apply. Right. right. That was the letter of intent. We're going to have right. to do a special hearing and town meeting, I think, in April okay. to uh, get their actual application in for May. Mm -hmm. And there's financial information required in regard to that request.
request for eligibility and ultimately they will have to go in with the grant right. application. For the letter of intent, they need to say where they plan on getting the match from. When they submit their final application, they're going to say where that extra match is going to come from. Okay. They've got to prove that there's a gap in funding that only CDBG can cover. Yes. Okay. And what's it? What's this in regard to? You mean what the whole project? Is? Yeah. What's the what? The overall goal is to get some extra seating and parking up at their place. Yep. So that they can have a private location if someone wants to rent out the place on the weekend, so it doesn't interfere with their regular customers. Um, it's I kind of left it broad enough so it can either be the second floor of their tasting room or it could be an outdoor seating area that's yep. still indoors. I think we would. Be, they are asking for thirty thousand dollars from this program, so whatever is left, they have to get from. I think they're going to do a loan for that. So there's a match required, but no obligation on the part of the town at all. Right. We're more of a middle man. We're a sort of a right. We an we umbrella. Just, we just have to make sure that in the following year or two that they hire one full-time equivalent job, which they speculate will likely be a day-to-day -day manager or cook. So. By the way, their pizzas are amazing. I just thought I'd put that out there. They're really good. And we also received the 2019 code officer report. So if anybody would like that, we have a copy of that. Any further discussion on the consent calendar? We have a quick claim. Quick, quick claim. Quit there is claim. a quick claim, yep. Uh, the discharge for 199 Union Road. Any further comments or discussion? Is there a motion? There is a motion and there is a second already. Is, uh, so all in favor? Okay, thank you. New business. Our illustrious Peg Tynan is up to talk about finance. I'm handing you is um, basically the annual report for the finance department that you'll see in the... Do you want it? No, I... Um, you'll see in our town report the last page that <coughs> oh, let's see if I have to, the last page is not going in the town report it um, it's just an employee updated employee list thank you it's okay if I sit yeah of course so um, as you know I've been working on budget <laughs> <laughs> so aside from budget, um, <coughs> what you have in front of you, like, like I already mentioned, was the town report. If you guys would read it and provide feedback, I would appreciate that. Um, um, just some other information on the employee list that you might like to know is we actually hired 16 employees in our current <coughs> year. Um, and then also the report that you have is on 2019. Some other stuff going on here is we just got the Lincoln County uh, assessment. It's $31,873 more from last year. Um, let's see, municipal revenue sharing came in. That um, just came in March 5th, and that's at a 3.7% increase, uh, which makes Walderboro <coughs> eligible for $600,592. I don't know if you wanted the details, but we only budgeted uh, here. In this year? Yeah, for, no, for 2021. Right. Is, we budgeted 300. This is fiscal year, 2020. Yeah, yes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, we budgeted 380,000, and they're projecting a 600,000. So just thought I'd share that because I just mm -hmm. came in this week. Um, other things I'm working on is we just got our property and casualty insurance renewal. Um, right now it's in the pipeline for the department heads to review their assets to make sure we are in check. Um, we also received a safety program, a new safety program from um, MMA. They <clears throat> it's an incentive and it's got three tiers. So if you follow the different program options, you can, up, you can save up to 10% on your premium. Um, 
I don't know if you, I have that here, but I don't have copies if you guys are interested in that. I had included that in their report last week. Oh, okay. A copy of what they had sent us. Okay. So if that's something you guys would like to do, um, Kyle, and have, I sent a copy of it to Kyle to see if he would um, give some feedback because I know we already are doing a lot of the things to qualify. We are, so, so we should just do it and qualify and reap the benefit of it. Right. And then um, the other things that are going on are audits. We just completed our workers' comp audit for 2019. Um, our financial statements are not complete yet. And for calendar year-end recap uh, for 2019, I processed 100 W-2s and 16 1099s. I just don't know if you guys knew those kinds of things. I <laughs> thought it would be infor good information to share. And we also had one um, OSHA reportable workers' comp claim in 2019. Um, other type office information, we got a new copier coming, which is going to save the town money. Uh, we have a printer maintenance program through Transco, and they do an analysis for us every year. And if we took three of our printers off the, the fleet and added this newer copier, it would actually save us money, so it's kind of open over here. And the one final thing I have on my list that I'm working on is um, TIF. I'm getting, uh, Max gave me a contact for a, a, a rock board to contact them to see how they set up their the accounting piece to TIF and their, because we have the same municipal software. So that's what I've got going on right now. A Any lot questions? of information. It's good. Okay. <laughs> I have to say, because again, this is a first, and it's all to credit you and Julie. Well, I honestly struggle to know what you guys would like, mm -hmm. and then the more I thought about it, it's like I'm giving information to Tanya for the town report, so you guys should, that, I just felt like that was a great starting point for you guys to see what I'm presenting for that and where we ended up in 2019. So hopefully next time we meet, I can give you a, a recap of where we are right now. I know you've done this in the past, uh, and I know the TRIO has the capability of doing it, and that is putting out a, a budget versus actual report. It might be helpful to see that once every three or four months, just to see where we are in terms of how we how we budgeted and whether we've done a great job or or not maybe not so great a job. I'm sure we've done a great job. But I thought of that. The reason I didn't is because you've been overloaded with budget information from right. me. So that's why I had I actually decided not to do it. No, for, and fair enough. I, I, I wasn't suggesting it be available for this meeting. I'm just saying it would be nice to see maybe once every quarter or so just to see where we are. That's all. Okay. Great. Yeah, Thank you. Super stuff. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. It was painless. Yeah. Tell your friends. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Peg. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we giggle a lot during the day. <laughs> We're a happy group. Public works. I think John has some things to talk to us about tonight. Happy John does. Has to do with the escalator and the grader. Um, Julie, with some sauce valve. And it's surprising. Um, I've never been through that company, I heard of them. Uh, so we didn't have to go up to bid. The prices come in uh, around 36 to 38% cheaper going through the source well. We did. Put in for specs for an excavator, um, the size I was looking for uh, that would fit with our project. It's a 135 <coughs> John Deere, um, no tail swing. Uh, that means we can keep traffic going by us when we're working side the road. It would be the right fit for the size of the roads that we're doing. It has uh, thumb cleanup bucket and the auxiliary hydraulics uh, if we want to run a hammer or a mulcher off of it. That would be the escalator. And 
that total price for the excavator is one ninety two five. Yep. Also, we looked into the grader, um, seven seventy John Deere. Um, when you're looking at a grader, you're looking at the weight of the grader and the horsepower. This one here fits in what we need. Um, the reason you need the weight is to uh, so you're able to cut the road that weight, not put the blade down. <coughs> this machine, um, the going price, I think was four hundred and forty thousand um, dollars. But we're two hundred and eighty-eight. Two seventy-eight. Two seventy. Yeah, I have it right here. Right here. You gave me your paper. You didn't keep well, your paper. The extended is two here. Yes, but in the end, the and, they're and giving us a ten a, a yeah. trade in two seventy four yeah. eight. Yeah. Yeah. They're actually giving you ten thousand dollars for that. Uh, so you're keeping that. And, uh, the problem was uh, <coughs> getting back to it. Are they going to come take it away? Good. <laughs> and with the grader, um, also a waste. Um, we'll come with it. 14 foot line. Right now, we're done. So, Julie checked in there. Financing for us. And if we go with, um, so I, I went, I asked. Municipal Bond Bank, they can do a bond sale. Mm -hmm. But they also said they had a leasing program, but they nobody's ever used it in 12 years. So I decided that just didn't make any sense to us. So um, I, I looked around, and Gorham um, Bank has a leasing program, and they gave us a municipal lease proposal for 10 years at... 3% fixed for both of the pieces of equipment. And that would be a 10 year payment. And the payments combined are less than what we budgeted for in the debt service portion of the budget. <laughs> and typically we would wait until after July 1st for this purchase because it, you included debt service for it in the 2021 budget. However, since he has money saved, he has enough in his capital account, we could make a first payment this year. It would be early, but we, we don't have to worry about paying off early. There's no pay, early payoff penalty or anything. So um, if you would authorize him tonight to use his capital fund, um, he can get both of them that way he's using them to work on the roads mm -hmm. now so we can pave more because it's important to pave now because gas is so cheap oil is cheap which means the paving is cheap and we want to pave as much as we can yep. are there any questions yep yes sir when can those pieces of equipment be delivered um probably the excavator tomorrow because wow. uh, they have one Greater would be about a month. Well, I've got to, I've got to provide some financial information yeah. to the lease leasing yeah. company. Well, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Right. I didn't know if it would be six months out, five months. You know. I, I like the question, the excavator. Um, the reason being is the track machine. And remember, I told you the work we need to do up the depth. <laughs> With the fuel prices potentially dropping, how much more does that add to mileage or or anything for? I know Julia talked about getting more mileage out of or more distance out of the mm -hmm. out of tiring. That's right, right. I'm not sure. Have you got enough roads done to be able to use most of that money that you have in your capital? Oh yeah, they'll be done this year. Good. Bob, if I read that right, it 
It looked like if we done it in seven years, it'd be 2.75. 2.85. Yeah, and not even considering that. We're just going with 10 because we're going with two pieces now. We, we, would, we would go both. Yeah, the so if we were to do the both of them 10 years for um, the greater um, would be at $29,626 and 10 years for the excavator would be 21,649.93 so just over 50,000 just a little skosh over 50,000 those are financing costs right right yep but I'm going to confirm what the rate is because this rate was given to me on March 4th. Oh, it's so be lower now. it could be lower. Yeah. It could be lower. And the reason you don't want to bond it is because well, you're going to have to pay. Fees. Well, you're going to have to do your bond attorney. Oh. There's going to be fees associated yep. with that. This is pretty much straightforward and it's it's simple. Three years of audits. They deal with the municipal municipalities, Gorham Leasing Group. It's Gorham mm -hmm. Savings Bank. It's rate right, local main bank. Um, you know, with the first, even they, they don't have a leasing program in place. So, I mean, I don't mind spreading it around um, as long as they're going to give us a good deal. And it's a lease purchase. And just like we did with the fire truck, it has the clause that needs to be had that if for any reason it's not funded, we'll give it back. So, you know, I mean, it's not, you know, if something changes drastically. You know, we have an out. Well, we do. Not that we'll use the out but but I mean I and I I, I just think that um, you know if we can get this equipment to you now it makes a lot of sense and like I said he had that money saved in the budget and then then it just it comes out of capital and then we just put it that in debt service for the next 10 years so you must be very happy with John Deere right? yeah yep. John Deere or Cat yep. The problem we've been running into, we've been getting, uh, years ago, we was getting deals on off-brain equipment, and um, that's what you got. Yeah. Now you can't get parts for them. Right. Nobody can find parts for them. So, um, that's our biggest problem. That's the downfall. Same way with boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, you would, to approve it, you would have to vote to approve the purchase of it um, and that we could lease through Gorham. Is that for both pieces of equipment or just one? Is that, what's the motion you want? Well, he wants both pieces. Well, I just didn't know if you needed just the one or both. No, you can just do one for both. That's fine. I would move for both pieces. I'll second it. And it's for Gorham Leasing Group. At a maximum of those costs, as I quoted, um, because the interest rate may go lower. Yeah. Yep. That's good timing. Any questions? Any further discussion on these? All in favor? Five zero. Thank you, John. Thank you. Good. Uh, I have one thing for you, leave, John. Yep. When's uh, when's gift camp bill getting done? Twenty seventh. Yeah, you guys must be having a get together for him or something. Or? He doesn't want anything. He doesn't. No. Well, I just like you know, mm -hmm. I'd like to just say congratulations on the mm -hmm. record. I know he's been here. I don't know how many years. Thirty-two years. Thirty-two years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, John. Bob. Bob. Sorry. I'd like to say that. Uh, Mr. Daigle has done an awful fine job of keeping our roads safe this year. Probably isn't over yet, but you know, a lot of mornings they'd have had to call school off if it hadn't been for him. Because he was out there getting the roads sanded and doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Melvin. And one other thing, I noticed yep. he's uh, cleaned the road back, the back cold road. He's cleaned it back far as he could. And I think it looks good. I've heard there's been a lot of complaints. But, you know, these roads need to be cleaned back so there's a place to put snow if we get it. You know, just because 
Just because you cut a tree that's growing up through the time, no reason to complain. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Mm. Any other comments? Okay, we'll move on. Old business, improving communication. I'll hand that one over to Jan Minzi. Oh. I just, I, I think I asked some people if we could just think about some ways that we could improve communication. That's, uh, you know, communication is sort of a, a foundation for any kind of group. And I was kind of anxious to hear what some other people. Just on the board? Well, it can be anything. So just, I just got, wow, I just had, this is the magic watch that my children gave me, but it just, I just got an email from you that I know isn't you. That happens. I know. It just it just struck me funny as I'm sitting here looking yeah. at you, and well, it that's came communication, up. isn't it? That, well, that, that is <laughs> that, that is communicating, but that's bad communicating. <laughs> you know, got to look at the look at the return address. Yeah. And yeah. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. That, You've been hacked. The there's more than one Bob Butler. Trust yeah, me. Well, I don't. Yay, yeah. I this one wants a lot of favor. I got him. I got an email from a Canadian lawyer talking about Robert Butler from somewhere in Canada, the deceased. Yeah. And he was wondering. You look good if, for a dead. He was wondering, 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 if, wondering if it was I, and if it wasn't I, maybe I could cooperate with him to get some of the money from the estate yeah. of this Robert Butler in Canada. I it's got an email from you, Unbelievable what some of these people are doing. I got an email from you that said that you wanted me to get gift cards. Oh yeah, that's poof too. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't for me, but there's a lot of fraud out there. Yeah, there really yeah. is. You have to be careful. Oh, yes, you guys don't do emails. I don't. I just no, but I'm them. a nope. <laughs> I would be like, no. <laughs> well, the more we know, the more we communicate, then we realize what you can tell what's fake. Yeah. Too. Cell phones, whatever they are, these kids have never learned to talk. <laughs> you know, and then you got the next one saying we need to put five foreign languages into our schools at grade one so that they're fluent in them, but they can't talk English. Well, the Madomic Valley did put out a new rule this year that cell phones are not allowed to be used in class unless it's for a school project that the teacher yeah, I do assigns. know that. My granddaughter is one of them. Yeah. And they, have, they can be used between classes and at lunch. Yeah. But they need to be out of sight, supposedly out of mind. That's yeah. a tricky one. But uh, I was happy to see that they put that. In the middle school, they're not allowed to use them or listen to music during class time. That's a, a school rule, unless they ask the teacher for permission to call home or something, and then they take it out. They go get it out of their locker and make their text or call out in the hallway so that they're not in the classroom. So in the middle school, it's it's rare to see a phone, and that's nice. It, there was a day when they were in every person's back pocket, but it's been a couple of years they haven't, and they and and they're just fine without them, amazingly so. <coughs> no, I agree. Well, I I know um, I mentioned what we talked about when I was with Bob and Julie last Monday because I think it's important that. And not that there was anything really earth shattering, but just so that um, people know what kinds of things we talk about. I know sometimes there's been some confusion on was it brought up at the Monday meeting or did it come from the select board? And you know, we don't I don't think anybody wants wants that kind of confusion. I would like to see more people to come to this meeting. There used to be a time when this place was full and people came up to here with their concerns. I'd like to see that come back. You talk about communication. Yeah. If, no, if nobody knows what's going on here on, at the board and they don't watch the videos, what do they know? They know enough to come to somebody and complain about something. Well, if you don't come to the meeting or if you don't watch the video to get the information in the first place, Whose fault is that? That's on you. So I would like to see this place become full again and have people come up to the podium with their concerns. How do you think we can do that? Get the word out. 
Oh, start, start, you know, you got Facebook. Invite people. <coughs> yes. You want people to show up, start putting controversial things on the agenda. <laughs> yes, that's Same thing thing. with the yeah. Shellfish Committee. Yeah. If, if I never have anybody show up unless I intentionally put something controversial on the agenda and the room will fill. If, if people aren't showing up here do, complaining, we must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. Because if you put something on current controversial, this place will be full. Guaranteed. Well, you know, if you put it on Facebook, 108 people will join an ice, <laughs> rink, uh, ice rink group. You know, I mean, and, and yeah. that's the thing is that you get somebody who has a great idea and they put it on there, but you, you need, you're right, you need to have somebody come out. And just so everybody's very much aware, I get plenty of complaints. <laughs> it just doesn't make it to this level. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's, that's good because they're reaching out to the appropriate places for it. So, I mean, but we never should get to the point where we think just because people aren't showing up, it means we're doing a great job. Yep. It would be great to have more people engaged. It would have, be great to have more people volunteer to do things. Um, and, and I do think that that's something that with the new website and apparently we have to be on Twitter too. I just mastered Facebook. Now I have to learn Twitter um, or Instagram. Instagram. I'm thinking that we should all just take pictures of the select board and put the little panda ears on you because I think you'd all look adorable with the little panda ears. Rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. That's, is that Snapchat too? Know. Apparently it's on Instagram. I, I, I don't know, but we're going to be on every chat, FaceTube, whatever it is. Anyway, um, but I, I do agree with you that we do need more people to, it would be great. But And if you do have questions and concerns, call us. Come and see us. We're a very friendly group. If more people came and they found out that we do need people mm -hmm. on committees, they would know. And maybe some of them would, you know, react to that. Well, I'm hoping they'll read. Alex, Alex might say it. something. Alex, Alex might say something. All we'll see. All Actually, I actually right. think Bob on the front page yeah. kneeling down would be a really good thing to get Bob into. A centerfold or something. We want you. You owe me a few, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want <laughs> well, All I think capital letters in bold. We need people to come to the select board meeting. I like having the department heads come again. We used to get a paper copy once a month of what they were doing, but it's so much better, I think, anyway. I don't know about you guys. Go they like walk. coming okay. rather than writing a report every week, I'll tell you that. Um, well, <laughs> They'll come once a quarter. <laughs> I like that. No, I, I, I do like it, yeah, having them come. I, it's been very informative having listening mm -hmm. to the department heads. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, do, I think, too, that uh, and the only drawback you have is sometimes when you have the same people coming to a meeting, they reinforce bad ideas. So it's nice to have a mix. And that's what I was saying about the diversity of mm -hmm. our, our boards. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, And sometimes you only have one person here, and they might not have anything nice to say at all. And then that's going to make you feel bad. So at least this way, you might have a shot. If there's two people, you got a 50-50 shot of doing something right. And the more diversity from the different parts of town, too, it's not always coming from the same area of town. If you split the uh, mm -hmm. town of Walterboro into four quadrants, you get north, two north above uh, Route 1 and two south, you know, south of Route 1. Diversity. Contrary to popular belief, we love all sections of oh, town. Oh, I know, but, but uh, uh, people kind of from the different sections come in. But Adam's mm -hmm. right. I mean, and we had an example of that not too long ago when a, a whole group of people showed up. They were concerned about internet, mm -hmm. and yeah. we heard that. <coughs> we've heard them numbers yeah. of times, and I hope, I think we've we've dealt. Oh, with I that. should mention that we we were able to schedule the public hearing earlier for charter oh. spectrum. So we're going to have that on the 24th. Oh, good. Not April 10th. Not April 10th, whatever, because whatever. we could yeah. do it earlier. We did it earlier yeah, because that just, it moves things along quicker. So yeah, okay. I will make everybody know because that publication went out in the paper, the Lincoln County News this week. <laughs> that's okay. excellent. Well, that's, we have it. We have somebody new in the audience. What made you come tonight, may I ask? Well, um, I really don't want to get into oh, okay. it right now, but uh, I, I did have a, an item that I thought was going to be on the agenda tonight that didn't, uh, didn't make it up on there. Oh, okay. But, yeah. What's that, the Fintown Road uh, item? Uh, say again? Was it the Fintown Road item? Uh, no, sir. No. Oh, okay. okay. Hmm. Had you written to us about it? Uh, no, uh, but I'd be happy to talk to you folks after. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. 
It's well, nice to have you. you here. But it's nice to have you. But I was Welcome. just thinking, oh, Welcome. cool, a new face. Yay, yes. thanks for coming. Are you on the internet? I, yes. You can go on the web page and get our agenda for this meeting. So if you're not on it, come anyways. But if you are, if your if your proposed uh, concern is on here, then you can talk about it. But yeah. and there's always time to talk about it under public comments. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if it's not on the agenda, feel free right. at public yes. comment. Free to come talk about it. We're excited. This is what we want. We yeah. Need people we, like you to you're the here. poster child for this. Thank wow. you. <laughs> No. <laughs> Little did he know, showing up at this meeting well, would cause smiling, this much excitement. So, he's he's smiling, so that's... We like excitement in here. That's good. <laughs> Anything else under communication that somebody would like to share? Did, Abby, did you have any ideas on how, as a board, we might communicate more? Not really. No? I mean, just talking to one another would no. be a big help, but I mean... A lot of times I don't know what's going on. It's I don't get too shook up about it. I yeah. I have confidence in the people on this board that if you and Bob have a meeting, yeah. you're going to tell us what's going on. Mm -hmm. If it's pertinent, if it's not pertinent, then it's not a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. I don't get shook up about it. If I don't know exactly what everything yeah. is going on, it yeah. doesn't bother me. I don't think you have to know everything, but to, to communicate <clears throat> yeah. on a regular basis, I think yeah. it. I don't think none of us communicate yeah. really outside of here or when we meet in mm -hmm. Julie's office, really. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how to fix that. I think you guys yeah. should, two, two, two select board members should go to lunch once a month. Well, I think, yeah, well, I was thinking just <laughs> coffee because I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting on the select board, is that what you're saying, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to be careful. Well, well you, can't, you can't have three businesses. of you, but I you just think that maybe you guys yeah. come, maybe we do like coffee or I, I, just to get everybody chatting I don't know I mean it always helps when you know somebody it always better. helps it, al yeah. it always, it always helps face to, to face somebody. bye huggy it's bear always, always better face to face and when you can talk about anything mm -hmm. too then you get to know each other better and then it's easier to deal I think it is. with with any well, kind of issues we could do is have a, a workshop mm -hmm. workshop every other meeting or every three meetings uh, where we just get here at five and talk about what's on our minds yeah, that can work. We can do that. Okay, sessions. We'll try it once and see who shows up. And then we're all busy. It's worth a shot. Not me. I don't have a life. <laughs> that you might will. be your life. That could be your life, you Katie. <laughs> Maybe that, that's a good idea. I'll get younger. Well, <laughs> And I think our new website is going to help with communication. Yeah. It's public back and forth. Do we have a time on it yet? I, they sent something back while Tanya was away, and I didn't want to interfere in her mojo. So okay. she's, tomorrow I'll talk to her about but it. But you were yep. with me when we tried to go on the website at that EDC meeting, and it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't come up. It wasn't there for some reason. The front page the was. The front page wasn't. No, there was, we tried to go in and look up something. I forget what it was. But we could do it. Um, it. It is under construction, and yeah. I hope people understand that. I mean, Someone called me today to see if the information for me is correct on the for the web page. Someone called me from communication for the web page. Who's doing it? They wouldn't have called you, Peck. That was a that was probably a scammer. Scam. No, no, they knew. They they they. No, nobody nobody from the web the website company would call you. Hmm. Well, I just pulled it up, and it's been a while since I've been able to do that. So I have it up right now on my computer. And when I go into committee, um, yeah, it's all right there. So far, so good. No, that's the old website. I know. I should, yeah. If I refresh it. Yeah. That's the one with Liam. It's still Liam and all the But, yeah, no, Katie, nobody would have called you for that. That's a scam huh. call. Hmm. They're getting what? clever at this. Mm -hmm. Working really so. hard. Technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all uh, technology. Okay. All those young people who understand it a lot better than They're some communicating. Of us <laughs> One thing I think uh, timely. Um, and we have it. <laughs> just, and I know sometimes we get this stuff. We got stuff today you sent out last minute. But when possible, it's in order to read and digest things, I, it's nice to get them early. You know, if we send well, I tried to get everything out Friday, yeah. and then oh, yeah. 
Um, my only issue today was I just got that from Mark Vinoy. Yeah. 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 As soon as I got cool. it, emailed to me. I emailed it to you guys. That happens. That happens sometimes. But if not, it's it's good to I know that one meeting I had. Uh, I told Jean Lawrence I'd have something all done and ready, and then I didn't realize they had had decided not to. But they just would have saved a little time. It's not that that's a not that that's a huge issue, but um, just looking for something. Ready to move on? Yep. Okay. Consensus. Um, agendas for the next meeting? Item. Or, or agenda items, thank you. Um, personnel policy, which would be available to It has been available. I just, any, if anybody has any comments before the next meeting, please get them to me. And Jan and I just finished the boards and committees policy today. Okay. You need to add that one. That, that shouldn't be a in. problem. Right. I mean, yeah. One. Oops, I'm sorry. I would just go ahead and put it in there. And then, then yeah, I will. And, right. and so we can maybe do that at the next How many as well. people are going to be on that committee? I would say five. We've got three on it already. You're going to be on that committee. Two more. Yeah. We'll replace Abbott. What are they talking about? Okay. Yeah, and, and in that, when we went through, yeah, they have an odd number. Yeah. Quite yeah. nicely. And um, what committee? talked about having the. Um, uh, personnel committee or something. was in there having the committee. Water committee. A report to the select board just like once a year. Which and that would bring. No that would help with the communication to understand what they're doing. Right. And yep. then that would bring them yeah, to the we meeting. Yeah, we start that and then we somehow drop We do. Off. We do. I know. But maybe working on, on something like that. Do we start? Do we need any executive session this evening? No. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you so much.